Hi, this is Nan, the Eco Extremist, with tips number three on how to really take care of the earth. And for number three, I'm going to be talking about number one. Number one meaning, what do we do with urine? Now, if you saw my tips number one, you saw the package with the uh, bidet. Unfortunately, I think my dog ate the package. I can't find it anywhere. At least he didn't drink out of the toilet. <laughs> Anyway, um, back to urine. In this book that I showed in either tips number one or number two, it talks about what we can do with urine. Do you know, on page 69 and 70, do you know the cheapest source of nitrogen available? It's urine. Your urine, in fact. And if you don't have a bladder or urinary tract infection, it's sterile. I learned that when I was in nursing. You can find that right on page 69. And uh, you believe me, as a woman, if you have a urinary tract infection or a bladder infection, you'll know it. So it's sterile. Gross, maybe, but sterile. Anyway, what you can do with urine is collect it. And I promised my good friend Frank, who's a global warming um, warrior par excellence, that I would tell about the day my solar powered watch didn't work, what happened, and what I did. This is the solar powered watch that works great, except I don't wear it very often. So one day I went to a vegan potluck, and on my way home I stopped at the natural food store. Well, I showed you in an earlier video, usually this is full, and it's full of purified water right now. I've had a multipure for years, but it doesn't remove drugs, so I've been getting purified water, and I'll talk more about that later. Anyway, so I drink a lot of water. It keeps me pretty healthy. So I got to the natural food store. It was supposed to be open. It was before 8, except my watch hadn't had enough sun in a while because I hadn't worn it, so it didn't work. Well... I showed you this in an earlier tip. This is this great thing that you can take with you when you go anywhere, potluck, out for food or whatever. And instead of wasting natural resources on um, paper bags, styrofoam, etc., you can have three um, hot meals in here. You see there's quite a bit of space in there. Anyway. <laughs> I got to the natural food store. It was closed. I know the neighborhood. There was nowhere I could go to go to the bathroom. So it was dark. So I got my handy little dandy little pot out of the car and I had my handy dandy diaper and <laughs> I, with nobody looking, used the pot, filled it up, cleaned myself with the diaper and took the urine home so that I could dilute it about one to five and put it in my garbage. I'm not my garbage, in my uh, garden to fertilize. So anyway, I'm gonna pour this water in here now and dilute it. Sorry, I don't have the equipment to let you see that I just poured it in, but here it is. So this is good for your plants. That is if you don't need a lot of salt. I'm pretty sure that if you do eat a lot of salt, it'll have salinity in your urine. So anyway, it's so sterile you could drink it. Mmm, that's good. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, that wasn't really urine. <laughs> that was another alternative sweetener. <laughs> um, <laughs> so how good is it? That was organic agave. I use stevia, which does not rot your teeth and is safe for diabetics and um, also won't make you gain weight. But my husband doesn't like the aftertaste of stevia, so we have organic agave as well. And I make lemonade either with this or with stevia. Anyway, uh, back to urine though. <laughs> um, you also, oops, I forgot my prop, so I'll just have to tell you about it. You also can use it as a nitrogen source in your compost. I've been composting more years than I can count, and I learned about composting from this book. You can take urine, undiluted, and put it in your kitchen waste, 
together with something like um, sawdust, which you can get as scrap at, at, at um, different lumber companies, and it creates a correct nitrogen carbohydrate balance so you can get excellent compost in a very short period of time, as long as you turn it frequently. And um, let's see, I wanted to say something else about that. Um, oh yes, compost. If you eat animal foods, that is the one thing you never, never, never put in your compost because you will get rats and you will get flies. Vegetables rotting, if you turn it frequently, it's called aerobic, um, excuse me, anaerobic. Oh, I'm getting mixed up here. If you turn your compost frequently, it doesn't smell. Like twice a day is excellent. I don't do that. I'm much too busy. But, but if you just let it sit, it doesn't smell either. Mine doesn't smell. But if you really want quick soil, turn it frequently. It'll get really hot. It'll kill any possible pathogens. But do not put eggshells, dairy, or any flesh products because it will attract flies and rats and mice. So um, back to compost. Oh, OK, that's it. That's all I had to say about urine. But one more thing. In my backyard, I have. Um, wild birds. I saw about six quail in my tiny backyard the other day. And I have chickens, two chickens, thanks and giving. And the wild birds love sunflower seeds. And I don't know if you can see it here. It's about a 50 pound bag. Um, but they get organic only because these little tiny birds, they can't, they can't handle all these pesticides. They're not good for us. Think what it does to a little tiny bird. And they really love sunflower seeds. But I get unhulled because they will make a mess and they will eat it really fast. But I mix it, just so life isn't too difficult for them, with um, hulled sunflower seeds. And my chickens, thanks and giving, love to eat this out of my hands. See, uh, see if I can show you. I don't want to spill it. OK, that's hulled. And, um, this container, by the way, was given to me by Supreme Master TV when they came to interview me as a um, vegetarian artist. It has all kinds of information on how to be a vegetarian or vegan and how it's so much better for the environment. And they have it in many different languages. This side is Spanish. Anyway, they gave me a whole bunch of them. So when I was at the natural food store, I didn't have a big bag to put the sunflower seeds in, and I will not use something that's disposable if I can avoid it if at all possible. So I just put the sunflower seeds in there because I've got enough of them. And that way, I'm sure in, since 1970 when I've been refusing bags that I've saved at least one tree. Oh, and last, speaking of saving trees, if you're too grossed out to use a bidet and, um, and a rag, like I so frequently do, not all the time, but very frequently, and it works really well, when you use your toilet paper, you don't have to use that much. Our toilet paper lasts a long time. And I don't like that this comes in plastic packaging. And when I have more money, I don't buy it in plastic packaging. But what I do like and why I get this brand or any comparable brand is to get as close to 100% post-consumer waste as possible. Not 40%, not 30%, because that's no big deal. That's just saving them money. What's really significant if it's 100% post-consumer waste and also make sure it's never bleached, bleached with chlorine bleach. I think that's it for today. Thank you.